age of this high fly fish. Just want to show you, make me a new substrate. I have a piece of carbon underneath this mixture, which is gypsum, pumice, calcium carbonate, feldspathic porcelain, and aluminum oxide and water to make a plaster. And what I've done is I've placed on the carbon electrode, and I'm going to be placing a layer of flour of pumice on top of this, on which then I will sandwich one more layer of the same mix that I have here to create a very layered substrate that we will subject to the electric field and determine if we can create more than just a glassy channel to see if we can create some form of cavern, glassy cavern out of this pumice material that we were seemingly able to melt before. So this is step one. Step two will be to place another layer on top of it. This is what the second layer looks like on top of the pumice. I'll let this dry out for a day and then subject it to electric field. So we have gypsum, calcium carbonate, pumice, small amount of feldspathic porcelain, silicon dioxide mixed in the outer slurry over the pumice over the same slurry on top of the piece of carbon as the electrode. So we'll see what that sandwiching technique will do, if anything. And it'll be interesting to see if we get the conductivity through the entire core of this as what we were doing with the material with the electric electricity running through it. So it should be interesting. Hey YouTube, this is Stockfly Fish. Let this uh, dry out overnight so we have the dual layer of the gypsum, calcium carbonate, pumice, aluminum oxide, water, plaster mix, um, and then in the inside of here is a solid core pumice. So we'll see if it's sufficiently dry to see if we can have the internal area um, glow. So here we go. One second, get everything out of the way. Here we go. Looks like it's still a little bit wet. I may have to let this one dry out a little bit more. for another 12 hours or so. The moisture level is still a little bit more than what I'd want. I think letting it dry out just a little bit more would be a good idea. Trying to get it to bore through the thickness to the differential substrate. Uh, it's blowing out some of the, there it is. So it is going into the inner core now. You can see it burning or puffing out some of the extra pumice. It's making a crater with a raised internal ridge. Just like Wall Thornhill has shown. See if you can focus in a little bit from that. Can you enlarge it like this? for a bit.
see it really stays molten for quite some time. So it'll be interesting to see what um, what additional tests will show for this. But suffice to say, um, it'll be interesting under closer observation as well in magnification. Have a great day. Hey YouTube, this is Fly Fish. Just want to show you, um, just started it again here glass-like structure and see what we can do as far as melting the internal substructure of this. This is from the previous experiment. I have the amp draw set to watts, so let's see what we'll draw with this. I'll turn the system on, arm it, and we'll go from there. Looks like it might still be a little bit wet. See if we can get it to go right here. And I'll hold this right there. And I'll show you what the watts draw on this is. About 70, 80 watts. 79 watts. Fascinating. 80 watt draw with this. And again, the attempt is to see if we can form any type of internal glassy cavern akin to what we see on the moon that the Duke University people have found. So as you can see, we have quite a molten arc here based upon an electric conductivity through pumice. And again, this is over an inch long, drawing 80 watts. It's white hot molten white hot molten um, pumice, which is sort of fascinating unto itself. I've melted many a metal, but the conductivity of the pumice with this electric current really begs one to contemplate what's happening with um, volcanic activity instead of heat and pressure. Is it electrical that's keeping the system running? So for what it's worth, again, the distance is over an inch of solid molten material, white hot solid molten material using 80, 80 watts, and it just burns out there. So, so again, you can see the resultant of that, sort of fascinating. I'll need to look at that underneath the microscope to be sure. Drawing about 80 watts right now.
And that's just an absolutely phenomenal amount of heat from 80 watts off the mains lines current. To be able to melt and maintain molten glass with 80 watts of energy. I'm just going to hold this in position, see if we can see any type of deep melting ability here into that plasma layer. So in any event, this is not just an anecdotal find. There is um, definitely quite a lot of energy being dissipated here seemingly untoward for 80 watts drawing off the mains current. So for what it's worth, here's the effect of melting the glass. And here we are moving along this course of this interface where the plasma is uh, interacting with the pumice below the level of the gypsum substrate. And here you can see above this a little glassy sphere that was raised from the electric field. So the nature of the substrate truly dictates what goes on a long distance from the input of energy. So is volcanism truly a heat and pressure situation? Or is volcanism an electric phenomenon that we're not recognizing? It truly makes one think. So that looks like molten magma. This is again just a high voltage AC current drawing 81 watts. Fascinating. Thanks for watching. YouTube. <clears throat> Again, you can see the effect of the conduction of pumice over an extraordinarily long distance. Now, again, is volcanism due to heat and pressure? Or is it due to electrical activity? There's approximately 1.5 inches between the electrode and that extraordinarily bright object. So you can see the substrate alteration with this movement of this electrode. And again, the intensity of the glow 
subterranean, as it were, below the substrate, truly makes one ponder. Oop, I lost the electrode. Is the paradigm consistent for heat and pressure for volcanism?